Welcome to this demonstration of Enterprise Vault 1003 File System Archiving. We'll start this demonstration by looking at what changes from an end user perspective when we start archiving data. I've opened a standard projects folder for this end user. If I drill into the projects folder you'll notice that an archived item has a slightly different icon. So there we have a PDF file that's not archived and a file that is archived. And you can notice the size actually show the same, so there's no difference in how the size are displayed, but the archived item is only a stub, it's not the real item. So what happens when you double click on an item? The file servers now retrieve the item back to the file system from Enterprise Vault, and as far as the end user is concerned, there's no change. So should you retrieve an archived item and make changes to it, if you save it back, you can either just save it, We'll change the file name and you'll notice the modified date has now changed. So depending on the archive policy which could either be based on a created date, last access date, modified date etc. Normally if an archived item is retrieved it would uh, be on that file system for the remainder of the day. Chances are likely that end user will uh, go back to that item, the same item they've accessed earlier that day. So the item will be restored back to a shortcut usually that evening during the next archive run. So archiving is generally very transparent to the end user. The only thing that changes is the icon. If I now go back to my desktop, let's look at some of the other functionality we can deploy with file system archiving. I have a folder called Home Share. The folders that you see in HomeShare has actually been created automatically by the Enterprise Vault Administrator. So we can deploy what we call retention folders and apply different retention categories to each of these different folders, different policies. For example, I might choose to archive all the items in the one year folder and I can choose to apply a one year retention category to those items and then expire, delete the items after one year. Similarly, for three years, I can choose for example in the personal folder to not archive anything as I've done in this case. So anything that the user puts in the personal folder will not be archived and no retention will be applied to it. Optionally I can also choose to roll out Archive Explorer functionality to the end user. So Archive Explorer is browser based, it allows the end user to see a folder list view of their archive, any archives that user have access to. So in this example we're going to Mike Smith File Archive. If I click on the One Year folder on the right hand side, you'll see all, all the items listed um, from the end user's archive. Um, what is particularly useful here is that if an end user have deleted an item, they would, uh, wouldn't necessarily need to log a help disk call, but they can retrieve the item from here and copy it back to their file system. I can also choose to roll out the search functionality to the end user. From here, end users can choose any archive they have access to and perform a search. Users can retrieve the item from here or restore it back to the original location. This concludes this demonstration.